Pioneer 2 was the last of the three Project ABLE space probes designed to probe lunar and cislunar space. The launch took place at 7 hours 30 minutes and 21 seconds Greenwich Mean Time on 8 November 1958. After Pioneer 1 had failed due to guidance system deficiencies, the guidance system was modified with a Doppler command system to ensure more accurate commands and minimize trajectory errors. Once again, the first and second stage portion of the flight was uneventful, but the third stage of the launch vehicle failed to ignite, making it impossible for Pioneer 2 to achieve orbital velocity. An attempt to fire the Vernier engines on the probe was unsuccessful and the spacecraft attained a maximum altitude of 1,550 km before re-entering Earth's atmosphere at 28.7 degrees north, 1.9 degrees east over northwest Africa. A small amount of data was obtained during the short flight, including evidence that the equatorial region around Earth has higher flux and higher energy radiation than previously considered and that the micrometeorite density is higher around Earth than in space. The reason for the third stage failure was unclear, but it was suspected that the firing command from the second stage, which contained the guidance package for the entire launch vehicle, was never received, possibly due to damage to electrical lines during staging. It consisted of a thin cylindrical midsection with a squat truncated cone frustum on each side. The cylinder was 74 cm in diameter and the height from the top of one cone to the top of the opposite cone was 76 cm. Along the axis of the spacecraft and protruding from the end of the lower cone was a 11 kg solid propellant injection rocket and rocket case, which formed the main structural member of the spacecraft. Eight small low-thrust solid propellant velocity adjustment rockets were mounted on the end of the upper cone in a ring assembly which could be jettisoned after use. A magnetic dipole antenna also protruded from the top of the upper cone. The total mass of the spacecraft after Vernier separation but before injection rocket firing was 39.5 kg. The scientific instrument package had a mass of 15.6 kg and consisted of an STL image scanning television system image scanning infrared television system on Pioneer 1, a proportional counter for radiation measurements, an ionization chamber to measure radiation in space, a diaphragm microphone assembly to detect micrometeorites, a spin coil magnetometer to measure magnetic fields to 5 microgauss, and temperature variable resistors to record spacecraft internal conditions. The spacecraft was powered by nickel-cadmium batteries for ignition of the rockets, silver cell batteries for the television system, and mercury batteries for the remaining circuits. The radio transmission was at 108.06 MHz through a magnetic dipole antenna for the television system, telemetry, and Doppler. Ground commands were received at 115 MHz. The spacecraft was to be spin-stabilized at 1.8 revolutions per second, the spin direction approximately perpendicular to the geomagnetic meridian planes of the trajectory. Pioneer 4 was an American spin-stabilized uncrewed spacecraft launched as part of the Pioneer program on a lunar flyby trajectory and into a heliocentric orbit making it the first probe of the United States to escape from the Earth's gravity. It carried a payload similar to Pioneer 3, a lunar radiation environment experiment using a Geiger-Muller tube detector and a lunar photography experiment. It passed within 58,983 kilometers of the Moon's surface. Pioneer 4 did not come close enough to trigger its photoelectric sensor. It was the only successful lunar probe launched by the U.S. in 12 attempts between 1958 and 1963, only in 1964 would Ranger 7 surpass its success by accomplishing all of its mission objectives. After the Soviet Luna 1 probe conducted the first successful flyby of the Moon on 3 January 1959, the pressure felt by the U.S. to succeed with a lunar mission was enormous, especially since American mission failures were entirely public while the Soviet failures were kept a secret. Pioneer 4 was a cone-shaped probe 51 cm high and 23 cm in diameter at its base. The cone was composed of a thin fiberglass shell coated with a gold wash to make it electrically conducting and painted with white stripes to maintain the temperature between 10 and 50 degrees Celsius. At the tip of the cone was a small probe which combined with the cone itself to act as an antenna. At the base of the cone, a ring of mercury batteries provided power. A photoelectric sensor protruded from the center of the ring. The sensor was designed with two photocells which would be triggered by the light of the moon when the probe was within about 30,000 kilometers of the moon. At the center of the cone was a voltage supply tube and two Geiger-Muller tubes. The laboratory's microlock system, used for communicating with earlier Explorer satellites, did not have sufficient range to perform this mission. A new radio system called Track e Tracking and Communication was designed. Track e was an integral part of the Goldstone Deep Space Communications Complex. 
A transmitter with a mass of 0.5 kg delivered a phase-modulated signal of 0.1 W at a frequency of 960.05 MHz. The modulated carrier power was 0.08 W and the total effective radiated power. 0.18 W. The despin mechanism consisted of two 7-gram weights which spooled out to the end of two 150cm wires when triggered by a hydraulic timer 10 hours after launch. The weights were designed to slow the spacecraft spin from 400 revolutions per minute to 6 revolutions per minute, and then weights and wires were released. Pioneer 4 received a few small modifications over its predecessor, namely added lead shielding around the Geiger tubes and modifications to the telemetry system to improve its reliability and signal strength. The probe had SN number 4, with probe number 3 recalled from launch due to technical issues. Pioneer 4 was launched with a Juno 2 launch vehicle, which also launched Pioneer 3. Juno 2 closely resembled the Juno I vehicle that launched Explorer 1. Its first stage was a 19.51 meters elongated Jupiter IRBM missile that was used by the US Army. On top of the Jupiter propulsion section was a guidance and control compartment that supported a rotating tub containing the rocket stages 2, 3 and 4. At 5 hours 10 minutes and 56 seconds Greenwich Mean Time on the night of 3 March 1959, Pioneer 4 lifted off from LC-5 at Cape Canaveral. This time, the booster performed almost perfectly so that Pioneer 4 achieved its primary objective, returned radiation data and provided a valuable tracking exercise. A slightly longer than nominal second stage burn was enough to induce small trajectory and velocity errors, so that the probe passed within 58,983 kilometers of the Moon's surface on 4 March 1959 at 2225 Greenwich Mean Time at a speed of 7,230 kilometers per hour. The distance was not close enough to trigger the photoelectric sensor. The probe continued transmitting radiation data for 82.5 hours, to a distance of 658,000 kilometers, and reached perihelion on the 18th of March 1959 at 1 o'clock Greenwich Mean Time. The cylindrical fourth stage casing went into orbit with the probe. The communication system had worked well, and it was estimated that signals could have been received out to 1 million kilometers had there been enough battery power. 